Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Plugin Development. In this video, we are going to learn about how to install and set up Composer and how to use its autoloader and install different packages. Okay. Now, before we do that, what we want to do is move our package.json, package.log.json, uh, webpack config, and all of these configuration files into the root directory. And the reason why we are doing that is because we would like to create a script, everything from the root of the directory, and not from a particular directory, because we'll be using Composer as well, right, which will be in the root. So I think it's better to just move everything outside. Okay, so let me do that. So I'm going to pull this out, refactor. Once you do that, uh, there's just a few more changes you need to make. Just go to webpack config and over here, uh, just need to say build wherever we have source. Build because this is now under builds. Actually, not build but assets. Assets. Okay, so under assets and then source. All right. So we've changed that. And then we also want to go to the package.json and over there wherever we have source we just need to prefix it with assets okay assets that's it there you go all right once we do that we want to go ahead and install composer so composer is basically a php dependency manager okay so you can go ahead and install and ins install composer so I'm not going to, you know, uh, show you how to download and install because th because this is an advanced uh, WordPress plugin development. So I'm expecting that you should be able to download this and install and set up. So you have the documentation available. You can download and set up Composer. Once you've done that, uh, the next thing you can do is say Composer init. And once you do Composer init, what it's going to do is it's going to create a Composer.json file and it's going to ask you uh, a bunch of questions about what your package name will be uh, and other questions that will be put as a configuration in that JSON file in the root of the directory okay so I'm gonna so I'm gonna keep this as the same so let's keep that description in fact rather than uh, typing this one by one I would rather say that you know we can copy paste a com my composer JSON configuration so let me just keep hitting enter and then say yes okay so this is our default configuration file now if you go back you can see that this is created a new file called composer.json which has the configuration for the composer okay so let me grab my configuration file there we go just gonna copy this just paste it here so let me explain that to you what's happening there. So you have the name of the package, you have the description, you have the license, version number, keywords, especially when you are uh, hosting this on the packages, then these things are going to be helpful. Uh, what does it require? Minimum PHP level, home page, which is nothing but my uh, root directory of my project, which is this GitHub project. Uh, if, it's, if you're going to be using it for yourself, then that'll be yours. Then there are two composer packages that we need to install. One is wp coding standards wpcs and php compatibility wp uh, i will be discussing about these two packages in the next video when we are kind of showing you how to uh, use php cs uh, so that your coding your code is as per the coding standard of wordpress and this is especially useful when you are submit this is especially useful because it help you in the security it help you follow uh, the wordpress conventions and also allow you to Submit your plugin to WordPress org because uh, it needs to be as per the WordPress coding standard. Otherwise, you'll get a feedback from them before they can uh, publish your plugin. Okay, and then you have some configuration to allow the PHP code sniffer composer installer. Okay, uh, then you put the author name, uh, auto load. So, auto load is basically going to allow us to auto load the classes from the source directory. So, we want to keep the classes inside of the source directory so rather than using spl autoload register and keep on 
uh, including or requiring those classes you, you can just use the feature of composer.json which is the auto loading feature where all you have to do is specify the path so you can see that now we have specified the path uh, which is source and it's going to look for this namespace so, so when we create our um, classes we're going to ensure that they are they have the namespace that's the namespace for that and this is as per the psr4 standards and this is as per the psr4 standards okay so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a file called plugin.php okay and then i'm also going to create another file where all my assets configuration will be there so assets.php okay then we can go to this pull request or you can also go to master by thing I think by the time the video is uploaded, you should already have uh, the code in the master branch. So this is your assets class. And then I'm also going to copy the plugins class and then I'll explain to you what happens there. So source plugins.php, plugin.php. And let me just grab the code from there and then explain to you what happens. Okay, so you have this plugin class. What happens is you put the namespace uh, Aquila features and then class plugin construct method which gets automatically called when this class gets instantiated and uh, then you have the init function here we are defining all the constants such as plugin path plugin url build path build url and plugin version so this allows us to reuse these uh, constants uh, anywhere in the plugin okay and then we're just instantiating the new instantiating the assets class which we've already created which is this one and here we have the init function we are using nq block assets and then we're calling this function which is nq editor assets this is where we're going to look for the file called assets.php so if you remember from the previous episodes that when you're building the gutenberg blocks uh, because of the way we have set up this webpack config and we're using the wordpress uh, package called dependency extraction webpack plugin it's going to look at your JavaScript files, whatever JavaScript file you're going to use, and then it's going to extract the dependency as to what you're going to need there. Will you need a polyfill or anything else for that matter? So it's going to automatically generate this assets file in the builds directory. That's what we're doing over here. We're just trying to get the path for that. We're saying Aquila features plugin build path, which is path up until here, then assets.php because this is under the root of the builds directory. Okay then we check if the file exists uh, if it doesn't return uh, we include this file and then we get the config of the js editor.js so if you open it we'll say js editor.js equals this in form of an array so it has the dependency as you progressively uh, develop gutenberg blocks it'll keep on adding those dependencies there okay then you have the version number, so you're going to extract the version number from here. So this is the version number. You'll keep on changing every time you uh, build it. Okay. And then we check if it's if it's admin. Then go ahead and enqueue this editor.js file, which is over here, this one. Okay. Uh, with this dependencies, which is nothing but the array of dependencies, the version number and in footer. And these are the CSS dependencies, uh, which you're going to pass here, and then enqueue our CSS styles as well so uh, our css file is here editor.css so that's the path of that i'm sure you're pretty much aware about how to enqueue the styles and scripts and we're doing that for the editor all right so that's how that works <coughs> now because these files will automatically be included because of our composer because you mentioned that you know aquila features the namespace and the source directory it's going to automatically include these files but we do need to um, instantiate this plugin class and the best because this is the main file main class for the plugin we need to basically instantiate that inside of the main file here okay so again i'm going to go back and i'm going to go to aquila features which is the main file and i'm just going to copy this code and i'll explain to you what's happening there okay so the name of the plugin uh the package the author and then over here, all we're doing is just requiring the autoload.php first. It creates the autoload file under the vendors directory. So let me show that to you. So the first thing you need to do is go over here. Uh, I think you have to just say yes. Okay, so what you need to do, you need to say composer install. So what this is gonna do is, 
is going to look for all of these packages that you have put over here as a, a dev dependency is going to install that here and the reason why we require these as dev dependencies and not under require is because we don't need this in production this is only for testing our code like w you know php cs uh, to ensure that our code is as per the coding standard for linting purposes that's why this is in under required dev otherwise this would have been under require which is basically on top over here okay now under vendors directory you can see that in install composer uh, package uh, php compatibility which is this one uh, squiz lab wp coding standard which is this guy here okay and then it's also added the autoload.php and this is where the composer um, it does all the magic of loading all the files that we have specified over here down at the bottom okay so all you have to do is include make sure we include this file so what we're going to do is we'll come over here inside of the root directory and inside of the aquila features.php which is the main file of the plugin and we're just going to require this autoload.php which sits under vendor okay so this is included uh, then we instantiate this particular class which is plugin.php uh, class this one and we have to make sure we use the namespace so namespace will be whatever our main namespaces which is aquila features slash plugin okay which is this and then we check if the class exists if it does then we just go ahead and instantiate it using new plugin and then it returns the object creates the object we're going to use that object with the registration activation hook and deactivation hook so at the time of activation of a plugin uh, this basically gets fired and the new plugin gets uh, instantiated this class gets instantiated and at the time of deactivating uh, then this class will be get will get removed okay so that's all that is happening there now if you want to see that everything works as expected uh, what we're going to do is we'll say npm run dev and then uh, if you go back under builds directory i think this build needs to stay under assets so let me just so let me just go ahead and make that as assets over here as well okay then this will ensure that it will create the build directory under assets and not in the root directory let me read on that okay so now if you open it you can see build directory is here and i can delete this one okay now you have the css you have the js which is great i'll go to my js file under source and i'm just going to put some console hello world uh, let's do console one and our webpack is already running which is it has already compiled and i'm pretty sure it must have put that inside the uh, build file which is this one which is great now if you go back under the editor all posts add new and then if you do inspect element you can see hello world prints which means this file is getting included if you want to check that out that it does uh you can just do page source editor.js and you can see that this is our plugins aquila features file which is getting included which is great and let's check for the css file to editor.css this is again coming from the aquila file and this is currently doesn't have anything but the CSS file and the JS file for the editor both are getting included, which is great. Perfect. Now, in the next video, what we're going to do is we'll learn about how to use the PHP CS and how to basically lint uh, on your on the code and ensure that uh, basically your code is as per the WordPress coding standard. We can also fix those linting errors. So we will talk about all of that in the next video. All right. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.